United Against Cancer. For doing this, Professor Dr. Teresa Kutzluk, um, a pediatrician uh, who completed his specialist training and became a pediatric oncologist, has held various academic and administrative roles in Turkey and other prestigious institutions, uh, he, amongst which he worked in cancer research at the University of Texas MD Anderson Cancer Center as a Fulbright Scholar and later on as a member of the staff. Among some of their key positions include being the Deputy Chief Physician of the University Children's Hospital in Turkey. He was a member of the board of the International Children's, Can Children's Center, uh, President of the European Cancer League, president of the Turkish Pediatric Oncology Group Association. And indeed, he was a past president of the Union for International Cancer Control. During his tenure, he famously addressed the United Nations General Assembly opening session and um, is very keen about pediatric oncology and childhood cancers. So thank you very much, uh, doctor, for joining us today. And we'll go straight into it, considering your busy schedule. As you know, my name is Zainab Shinkafi Bagudu. I'm a pediatrician like yourself, but much younger and less specialized in oncology. Most, more, uh, I am more of an advocate. And so we're doing this interview to see how we can link the work that you're doing and promote it globally, amplify it while showing the interaction and the commitments to interact between uh, stakeholders in the space. So thank you. My first question to you today would be to ask you if you can describe some of the unique challenges that you face in diagnosing and treating childhood cancers in Turkey. Um, first of all, give us a background of Turkey in terms of the economic brackets. We know that one of the greatest challenges that we have in pediatric oncology, we'll go straight to the point now, is the wide disparity between high and low middle income countries in diagnosis and in outcomes. So for yourself in your area of practice, having been in a Western high income country and now practicing in Ankara, uh, please give us a brief overview of that. Well, first of all, I'd like to thank you and the organizers uh, for the kind invitation. It's going to be a pleasure for me to talk about the situation in Turkey, what we are doing, how we are doing. Turkey, as you mentioned, is an, an, an upper middle income country with a population of 85 million. So we have a population of children younger than 14 years of age is about uh, 20 million. So every year we expect to see 3,500 uh, new cancer patients. That's not a big number when you compare this number with the adult cancer patients. So every year Turkey expects 240,000 adult cancer patients. So compare 240,000 with 3,500 so that makes your life difficult because it's, it's, it's a small number. It's all over the world. We, 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 we are facing the same issue. How can we raise the childhood cancer as a priority issue in the, in the health mm -hmm. agenda? Uh, in Turkey, I, actually, uh, I can say we are doing good in many sides because pediatric oncology became a specialty in 1983. If we mm. go back, we see the roots of the pediatric oncology in early 70s. So we did for the last uh, 30, 40 years, Turkey is investing a lot on the uh, pediatric oncology. 
when I start, I started to pediatric my pediatric oncology career in in nineteen the mid nineteen eighties. So those were the days. The pediatric oncology centers the mostly were located in major cities, but now mm -hmm. we see more pediatric oncology centers distributed all around the country. But here is the problem number one, uh, is uh, the government sent pediatric oncologists and hematologists in the peripheral part of the country. But in those places, we don't have a comprehensive team. So still people keep coming to major cities. But at the end, how, uh, how how are we doing access to care, access to medicine, access to diagnosis, access to uh, surgery and others? Uh, we are doing well in, in many sites. The, the, the outcome for the childhood cancer is, uh, I am running the Turkish Pediatric Cancer Registry. We were able to reach at least two thirds of the cases uh, results. So I would say the long-term survival, five-year survival rates at the moment in Turkish children with cancer is about 70%, which is an acceptable level for an, mm -hmm. for an upper middle income country. This we are, we are, we are, we are uh, where we are supposed to be. So in this uh, aspect, uh, okay, we don't have major problem on access to medicine, access to care. Uh, I will tell you later what kind of problems we have. <laughs> so not everything. Okay. Is yeah, answering yeah. all the questions. Thank you. Of course. <laughs> but what Turkey did the during the last ten years, Turkish government put put the the, the universal health coverage in in practice. The law became effective in two thousand twelve. So every Turkish children has access to care. Uh, however, one, uh, what are the what are the uh, problems? Uh, one main problem, I think, not only in Turkey, in many parts of the world, the pedi When I when I started the pediatrics, I was I was in the third rank on the graduation, in one of the best medical school in Turkey. I I was so motivated to be a pediatrician. Nowadays in Turkey, uh, the pediatrics in the last uh, order of the uh, choices. So choices. nobody wants to be a pediatrician. Among those who prefer to pediatrician, when they finish pediatrics, they don't want to become a pediatric oncologist. So not at the moment, but in the near future, we will have uh, human resource problem uh, finding the uh, pediatric oncologist. Of course, in major cities, you will see uh, all subspecialties, surgeon, nurses, pathologists, uh, but in the peripheral part, not complete uh, care of the patients, comprehensive care of the cancer patients. They are still keep coming to um, Istanbul, Ankara, and in their big cities. This is mm -hmm. one of the issues we have to invest more. Human resource is another thing we have to invest more. But I will also mention uh, the, the landscape in oncology is, is changing, not only for children, but also adults. New the diagnostic modalities, new treatments, targeted medicine. How are, how are we doing access to uh, targeted therapies. Uh, in some ways, we are not that bad. We have we 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 are we, we are uh, able to access to many of the targeted therapies, uh, okay. but still uh, going a little bit slower. For example, as a as an example, uh, dinituximab, a targeted medicine for the care of neuroblastoma patients. Mm -hmm. Uh, came to Turkey uh, two years later than the uh, Europe. I mean, two years is acceptable, of course. It's not. Yeah. It's not. Mm -hmm. Still, it's we not have bad. a problem. Uh, what I would I would say is, we have some limitations on the research. Maybe we can discuss later how mm -hmm. we are doing the pediatric cancer research. Mm -hmm. 
So adult, our adult colleagues are doing a lot of clinical trials, but mm -hmm. we are uh, uh, having difficulties on uh, performing uh, or conducting clinical trials in children. Although I was able to mm -hmm. lead two uh, clinic, international clinical trials in my department, still research and clinical trials is an area we can invest more because we have the yeah. capacity. The population mm. here, mm. we have enough human resources, but still we have some problems. These mm. are basically what, uh, what I, will, I will say about the... Uh, the landscape. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe to Onka Daily on YouTube. Hit the bell icon to stay updated.